Hello and welcome to Ada Pulse, the community-funded news channel keeping you up to date with all the news and emerging projects that are in and around the Cardano ecosystem. As today, we are discussing Atala Prism, something you've all may have heard of, as we discuss the foundations for sovereignty. And this is an article by Cardano420, one of the newer writers that have been onboarded to the Ada Pulse team, thanks to the funding we get through Catalyst. So thank you for that. And today, we're just basically going to discuss what Atala Prism is, what alternative options there are out there, and basically how it works. So do click the like button, hit subscribe, and get the bell button for the notifications. And I'm Josh from ATN Stake Pool, your presenter for Ada Pulse for today. Let's just crack on with this, shall we? Now, when it comes to identity or proving your identity, the existing systems we have at the moment have been pretty reliable so far, you know, in a way to authenticate your identity. And it's helped connect people, you know, around the world with trade, tourism, probably on levels that weren't initially conceived at the time. But, you know, it, if you think of the whole world, it's excluded a massive portion of the population. The centralization risk that's inherent in government controlled processes presents a big challenge in the development because you know you want the whole world to have a global identity system not each country having their own now just the concept of a self sovereign identity on the blockchain just inspires thoughts of a future where each individual has full control and authority over their own identity so you got to remember, like currently, personal identity, it's, it's not a human right. It's not respected as a basic human right. And so because of that, you know, economically vulnerable countries and communities um, are the ones that suffer and fall behind because they don't have this comprehensive identity solution. Now, there's a few um, decentralized identity projects being developed on Cardano, and each has got their own kind of unique approach and way of doing things, which is only natural. But one of these solutions is Atala Prism. Now, that's a project that's seeking to provide users with, you know, full control over their personal data whilst maintaining the privacy and security. So essentially, at its core, you know, Atala Prism is a tool for creating a verifiable digital identity that can be used across various platforms and services. So really what they're aiming at here is really aiming to be the gold standard of identity services to be used across the world universally. Now think about this for a second. Imagine having your own digital tamper-proof record of your identity, which can be verified by, you know, anyone around the world with your permission, of course without any need for a centralized authority. I mean, how useful do you think your passport would be then? Atala Prism Foundations. So last year, Cardano 420 uh, attended the consensus in Austin, Texas. That furthers my view that all the big events seem to happen in America. The UK is here, guys. We can do events too. So, yeah, I'm glad it happened in mid-June and it was hot and humid. I hope you sweated like a pig. But the reason we're bringing it up is during the course he was there, he got one of those, you know, like a swag bag, you know, a bag you get at these events. But inside it was a uh, Atala Prism Foundations. And it served as an introduction to the concept of self-sovereign identity and details, you know, the blockchain approach that makes it possible. Identity. So in Foundations, the Atala Prism team r reminds us essentially how often we use our identity in our like just normal day-to-day -day life. Um, so here's a snippet from it and check out what they said. Every time we use a cell phone, social media, email, text, access a bank account or turn the lights on, we engage our identity. We may stand in line at our local coffee shop and engage with a stranger while we wait for our coffee, we may be texting friends, browsing social media, or talking to someone on the phone. We would easily add dozens of interactions during the few minutes we're waiting. So to sum that up, basically, over the course of just a normal day, we may have thousands of unique connections that engage our identity on a personal and a business level. 
identity models. Now, as we all know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And it's the same with managing identity. There's different approaches to do this. And, and each offer their own benefits and drawbacks. So there's always like this give and take. Um, so let's start with like the centralized model. So examples of this might be like government ID numbers, passports, social media handles, your phone number or internet providers, etc. A, a user in this model must get permission to have an identity from the provider. So this model isn't unworkable, but it's not really optimal as there are some missing key features there. So let's move on to the federated model. This model is an improvement to centralize, but it doesn't address its main problems. So there's two numerous identity providers who allow you to use your login credentials to access a variety of services and organizations online. Familiar identity providers might be like Facebook, Google, GitHub, Twitter, Amazon, and Instagram, etc. But then you have a self-sovereign model. Now, cryptography unlocks the power of decentralized identifier or shortened we call them dids did dids so um and this is a concept at the center of this model a did is like a fingerprint it's unique to the individual and we can have more than one it's like we have multiple fingerprints so there is no centralized authority required an ecosystem of ID holders and issuers and verifiers can exchange data securely and efficiently. So according to Sovereign Foundation, there are 12 principles that guide the self-sovereign identity movement. So one, we have representation. Two, interoperability. Three, decentralization. Four, control and agency. Five, participation. Six, equity and inclusion. Seven, usability, accessibility, and consistency. Eight, portability. Nine, security. Ten, verifiability and authenticity. Eleven, privacy and minimal disclosure. And twelve, there's transparency. How does it work? So in Foundations, Atana Prism team, they talk about something called zero-knowledge proofs. Uh, we're going to shorten it to ZKPs. And yes, I know I'm English and I'm saying Z instead of Z, but I think that's how it's meant to be said and it makes it easier. I say Jay-Z after all. But anyway, so zero knowledge proofs or ZKPs are cryptographic functions. Now, the purpose of a ZKP is to prove something without knowledge. Remember, zero knowledge. So meaning you can prove something without exposing the fine details. And they use a great example um, where you can use a ZKP uh, in a local pub. So check out, this is what they said. Today, we show an ID to a stranger containing our name, address, and date of birth, and amongst other details, in a location where our sort of inhibitions may become impaired. So the question is, what does the pub need to know? It is not my age, but whether or not I'm old enough to consume alcohol. So I shouldn't have to give up my date of birth, essentially. You know, I just need to say, yes, this guy's old enough to drink. Leave him alone. Now, this cryptographic kind of breakthrough, if you like, makes it possible to change the way we share and protect our private identity information. And the blockchain enables this sort of fundamental shift thanks to its balance of sort of audibility and hashing privacy. Holders, issuers, verifiers. So I'm going to start with a quote from the Atala prison team. So check this out. We must realize that there is no collective moral intelligence living in a cloud that can substitute for genuine, attentive and empathetic human perceptions. So whatever we do, let us not concede our most basic moral capacities to the contingencies of the market or the illusion of a hive mind. So let's now go through these three main pillars, if you like, of self-sovereign identity and see how it works to the benefit of the global collective by fortifying the rights of the individual. So here we go. Firstly, you have the holder. Now, a holder is an entity that has and controls a decentralized identifier or did, remember. And holders can make connections with other entities and share information with them. Then there's the issuer. They issue credentials to those who they have connections. An issuer cannot send 
uh, credentials to random holders. There must be an established relationship. Then that brings us to the verifiers who authenticate or verify the credentials that get presented to them. There will be different assurance levels requiring different authentication demands depending on the importance of the credentials. So think like cell phone reward programs versus acquiring a passport. Trust frameworks and registries. Now, we interact with others by using trust frameworks like all the time. Now, and often without realising it. So take the example of a medical board. So it derives its authority to issue licences from a regulatory body. And this authority is how we can confidently trust that, you know, our doctor is, is fully certified, for example. Now, these frameworks depend on sound governance to maintain trust. So governance in this context means those who govern, who can the ones who can issue, receive and verify a credential. And the body can consist of a single entity or thousands. There's literally no limit to the makeup of these bodies. Now, once a sound structure for regulation and governance has been established, a trust registry containing like a list of entities that are permitted to issue credentials can be implemented. And this list will be maintained by the governance authority, updated each time a new issuer enters the system. The extended trust diamond. Now, the easiest way to explain this is with this image. So take a look. And I think it's, you know, it's pretty fair to say that the extended trust diamond accurately depicts the Itala Prisms team vision for the future of self-sovereign identity. The goal is to respect a did holder's privacy and their individual rights, while also striving for, you know, efficiency and usability. Now, admittedly, like at first glance, the diagram can appear sort of ominous because it contains at the bottom there the governance authority managing a trust registry. However, let's remember that governance authority could be a transparent body of thousands of entities, each selected in a straightforward and unambiguous way. And then suddenly the idea sounds a lot more appealing. Ethiopia. Now, if you cast your mind back a while ago, Ethiopia was big news when Atala Prism uh, got in there. And a lot of progress is being made in the Im implementation of a national student and teacher ID and attainment recording system based on the blockchain. So despite being one of the oldest nations in existence, the 100 million or more population of Ethiopia still don't have like a comprehensive educational certificate system. I mean, that seems pretty crazy, right? I mean, and this is a fundamental trust framework that helps a society advance in the modern world. So according to their website, Atala Prism's identity solution enables, you know, Ethiopian authorities to create tamper-proof education credentials for the three and a half thousand schools and five million students and the 75,000 teachers out there. DISH Telecommunications. Now, the Cardano Summit back in 21 kicked off with a massive announcement that, you know, Dish Network Corporation was interested in Cardano. And, and you know, it was game changing news. It was big news. And Dish has taken the first steps towards the launch of decentralized identification and loyalty system that's going to be built on blockchain technology designed and developed by Impa Output. So a large American company offering satellite television, audio programming, satellite internet and interactive television services to nearly like 9 million customers is using Cardano and Artala Prism. So it will be an exciting development when a blockchain based customer ID is launched on Dish. And as we hope, it will create new value for their customers, Cardano and obviously the company itself. United in Sovereignty. Now, it's pretty clear that the identity systems that are used worldwide are well overdue an update. You know, without control over our personal identity, all other rights and privileges that we enjoy will inevitably be exposed as illusionary over time. A dispersed collective of individuals, each with sovereign control over their identity, representing regions from all over the world, interacting on a mutual baseline of verified trust could just be that leap forward that humankind needs. I mean, OK, Atala Prism isn't the only project working on this. There's a few out there. But 
all these different approaches come with different trade-offs and things like that. So some may be good at some things, some are better at others. But the key here uh, is at the core of Cardano, at least, uh, is interoperability. So if they're all interoperable, then we're getting the best of all worlds. So let's not just... Atala Prism is the main name that gets mentioned, but let's not forget any of the others either. Uh, you know, because the more, the merrier in this case. So, but that brings us to the end of this, uh, the article for today. Remember, the full article can be found on the Ada Pulse website. Uh, and I'll leave a link in the description below. So do remember to click the like button, hit subscribe and hit the bell button for the notifications. And I'm Josh from ATM Stakepool, your presenter for Ada Pulse for today. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.